A big thank you to PlayStation for sponsoring this content. Hi, I'm Opal in Cosplay, and these guys asked me to make this guy, so here's how I went about doing that. <laughs> Chronologically, this is actually where I started with the costume. Like, ignoring the planning side of it, physically crafting, this is where I started. And that is Atreus' mistletoe arrow necklace that he wears. I started with this because I had three different ways that I knew I could go about making it, and I really wasn't sure how to go about starting it, or which way to use, so I thought, hey, I'll just do all three and document it. <laughs> so then it shows like three different options if you guys want to make the mistletoe arrow, um, three different ways you can go about doing it, and sort of the results and which is my favourite, so let's start. As mentioned, I have three different materials to choose from that I thought could work. The first being cosplay. Now cosplay is a really great, like, as it, as it says, is clay. <laughs> it's a clay that once it cures and hardens, it turns into a really flexible foam. It's super lightweight and it's fun to use. It isn't the easiest. You have to work with it incredibly quickly because it does start to cure as soon as it hits air, but it is a really cool way of going about details like this. Secondly is polymorph. If you're not familiar with polymorph, they are heat activated beads, much like warbler, which is, you know, a thermoplastic, they are the same, they are activated by heat. So the way that you mainly go about them is dropping them in boiling water, leave them and they turn into a really like moldable plastic. But once again, much like cos clay, they cure incredibly quickly and you have to keep heating them up. And as soon as you start heating them up, they start to lose their form. So it's quite difficult to work with, but they have a really nice translucent finish and I thought they could make quite an interesting texture for the mistletoe arrow. Final tried and true method that I've used quite a bit um, is Fimo. Fimo is a clay, once again that's heat activated, <laughs> there's a theme here, um, that you mould into shape and then you put in the oven to cook and cure. Um, this has great advantages because it comes in like many colours and you don't have to worry about like a time limit whilst working with it, like it doesn't cure as you work on it, it only cures once you put it in an oven or use like a really high heat source on it. Fimo have a fantastic range of options including this sort of special effect range and there is a translucent green in it and I absolutely love this clay because once it cooks it almost looks like jade. It has like so many layers in it and it's really pretty so I was like I have to use that and try it because I think that could look really effective. So first and foremost I go in and I sketch out the shape of the mistletoe arrow. After sketching out the shape of the arrow, I then go in with the clay and my first method, as you'll see, which didn't quite work out, was to just um, make the clay really warm and make it into the shape of the arrow. I start out by heating up the clay just in my hands um, before rolling it and stretching it and flattening out into the correct shape, as you can see. I'm using a couple of tools just to get the desired effect. And it's looking okay so far, it's not exactly how I envisioned, but I thought, hey, I can just keep building it up. Let me just, let me just take it up and um, shape it a bit more. Oh, oh. <laughs> anyway, scrap that. I'm going to start again and uh, roll it back into shape. <laughs> that was my fault. I knew that would happen deep down, but... I just let it happen. By flattening onto the paper, I was basically like merging the two materials. So I knew it would rip, you know, as soon as I started lifting it up, because I'd been forming it to the paper blow, I knew it would rip. So that was a fault on my behalf. Then I had to think about how I'd go about doing this, how I would have an armature beneath it to keep it shape, but also make it chunky enough. I had this craft wire just lying around in my box of random stuff, so I decided to go in and shape that into a really rough base of the mistletoe arrow shape. I pinched and rolled obviously where the ends are because they would easily come apart if I didn't. And then I took my clay and just melded it around that shape. I really roughly blocked it all in just to get the basic shape of it. It took quite a while to build it up and um, cover all the wire, but it was fun. It was satisfying and it didn't rip like the first time. <laughs> Once the basic blocking of clay was on the wire, I went in with my tools to define the shape. I added the edges to look like obviously it was crossing over. I smoothed it all out using like a ball tool and I just made it look a lot more, you know, cohesive as one solid thing as opposed to a bunch of clay bits smooshed on top of each other. 
Next, I then went in with my flat edge tool again, just to add some texture to it. I wanted it to have like a woody texture. My mind thinks it's wood that's imbued with the magic of the mistletoe. So it's got, I, I wanted it to have a wood texture. So I went in and just added like fake wood grain using my flat tool. And I do that with each of these, as you'll see. This just adds a lot more life. And later on when painting, it will make it a lot more interesting texture wise because the lines add a crevice for like acrylic paint to go. I'm then going on to the color. Most of the color will come from the clay itself and then also the acrylic detailing afterwards, but I wanted to add a little bit of um, color depth to the base when I cooked it. And the way you can do that with Fimo is use chalk. <laughs> you shave the chalk down into like basically a dust and using a paintbrush, you just add the color on. It adds a really nice matte finish to the clay once it's cooked and also a bit of color variation that's quite subtle when cooked, but it just looks really great. Like I said, I wasn't too worried about this step because I knew a lot of the details would be coming from the final stage of painting as opposed to this part, but I thought it a nice detail to add anyway. I also started adding the shadows in this step as well, again, just to establish where the colors would be going. Next, we're moving on to foam clay. Foam clay, I don't get on with very well. <laughs> I enjoy using it for detail stuff, but as in terms of like actually making stuff just using it, I struggle. It's it's a material that is hard to get used to using. This is a really simple process. Um, I just roll it out into the shape and indent where I want them to cross over, just so they sit a bit more flush. And then I just shape it into how the mistletoe arrow looks. <laughs> Whilst it still has enough gift to work with, I also just add some scoring lines again, just to add that wood grain effect. The arrows seem to have a weird little bit behind it. It's almost like a little tube. I don't know what it is. Um, so I also made that out of foam clay and I made it double-ended so I just cut it in half to have two of them. If I wasn't sure between the two, I could add it and see how it looks as a final result. And the third and final method was using polymorph. This was definitely, definitely <laughs> the most messy of the three, as you will see in a very, very quick second. So the way you work with polymorph, as I mentioned, is you pour the beads into the hot boiling water and take it out and then instantly burn yourself because it's way too hot. <laughs> so you leave it in there a little bit till it cools down enough for you to take it out and sort of handle it with your hands. You can use a heat gun with polymorph, but I find boiling water works better from the beginning just because it evenly heats it all up. To get the transparent green texture that I mentioned prior, I actually then added acrylic paint into it. So I added acrylic paint into the middle and then mixed it in. I worked the polymorph around it to distribute the acrylic paint throughout it. Polymorph cools down pretty quickly and starts to harden so I just use my heat gun to keep activating it before rolling it into shape and once again like the foam clay and the normal clay just shaping it into the mistletoe arrow and then once again use my flat edge tool to add some wood grain effect. And that's us all done for the base of them. Um, they're all so different and I really like how each one came out. Unfortunately, the polymorph shape didn't quite come out as cohesive of the other two, but I still really liked the look and effect of it and the color. I really like how the Fimo arrow came out. That was definitely my favorite from the get-go. Unfortunately, some of the wire is a bit exposed, but I will be going in with acrylic paint to cover that up anyway. And the foam clay arrow is great because it's so lightweight. It barely weighs anything and it's super flexible as well. So focusing back on the Fimo arrow, going for craft knife to shape it down a bit better and just add a bit more definition to the edges. The arrow seems to have a bit of a carved look to it, which is once again why I think it's some kind of wood. Um, so this also just adds a really nice texture and makes it look more like carved wood. <laughs> And then you have enough plastic shavings to season any meal with. Come back for more cosplay craft cooking tips. <laughs> Once the foam clay arrow had hardened, um, it almost expands a little bit as it starts to dry and cure. So I went in with a craft knife again just to add some more scoring because the lines that I had added prior had kind of like smoothed out. So I just wanted to add a bit more texture to it again. And then my favorite process of this was painting. Um, I used that 
light metallic green throughout this because like I said it's one of my favourite acrylics I own. It has such a nice sheen in the light and really is iridescent so I made sure to use that for each arrow. <laughs> so starting with painting the Themo arrow I went in with black acrylic just to start adding in the shadows because I like to start shadows and then highlights so I can sort of dull out the shadows if they're a bit too dark if I need to afterwards. So I go in and dry brush some black acrylic into the edges. I then go in using the light green iridescent acrylic and dry brush on top of that again just to accentuate the details and the textures. Next we move on to the foam clay arrow, same process, layers of acrylic paint since it's a black base this time so I actually had to you know make the base green and then going in with shadows and highlights exactly the same as I did with the previous arrow. Here are the three of them together. I think overall they're all really effective, they all get the job done. I do like the lightness of the foam clay but overall my favourite is definitely the Fimo one. It just has so much depth, it feels really solid and it feels good to wear as well so that is definitely the one I'm going to be finalising. However I'm going to be going forward and finishing them all up just for the sake of it and hey! Maybe I'll do a giveaway of one of the spare ones. How would you guys feel about that? I grab my excessive amount of leather cord, as you can see here. And then we're going to go in and start making the necklace. So referencing the character model, I'm going to go in and I'm going to wrap the leather cord around to basically make a hook for the rest of the necklace to hang on. Simple process, I use super glue to hold it in place. And then I do that three times over. <laughs> This is actually really fun and satisfying and almost like a little puzzle for me. I, I had a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> I trim the excess edges of the cord and then we're all good to go. Next up, I bought these simple wooden craft beads from my local craft shop. They were the perfect size for the yellow and red beads that Atreus has on his necklace. To easily paint them, I actually just stack them on top of my leather awl, which is this pokey pokey stick you see here. And then I just go in with acrylic paint and slap layers of colour on both yellow and red. I did a couple of layers just to make them nice and vibrant. I then go in with more leather cord to actually make the necklace itself. I thread it through that nice little loop I've made obviously after measuring it to hang off my neck at the correct length. To put the beads in place I simply tie a knot and then thread the bead on top of that knot and then tie another knot on top of that so it won't move on the actual necklace at all. I also then add a third knot just to hold the actual pendant in place as well so it's not sliding around and the length of the, the red and the yellow beads sit at the correct height as is the reference image. I'm going in with acrylic once more and just weathering where these knots are because they're not going to be moving. This just adds some really nice depth and like lived in texture to it. I just use some dark brown to make some more cartoony shadows. Using that weird little foam tube I made, the little ones that sit behind the arrow, I stick it on a pin because obviously it's just foam clay so I can just boop, pop it on and then I paint it using various shades of green including that really nice iridescent one, the deep green and also black just to add where the little like edges are. I cut that in half at an angle so it'll sit nice and flush against the pendant and then I glue it to two of my favourite pendants so I can sort of choose between them. I really love how the clay pendant came out, I think it's awesome, I think it looks really effective. Overall I'm extremely satisfied with the result of the mistletoe arrow necklace. I love the stylized look and I'm really happy with how the colour pops from the rest of the costume. It's such an important piece of storytelling so I wanted to make sure it stood out. Thank you so much for continuing to support Building Boy and I'll see you guys next episode!